if you allow me uh, I share some personal thoughts with you and a little later on in my little memorial speech you'll understand why I'm doing this I'd like to name a few of my warrior brothers who were forever etched in my memory. Lance Corporal Howard, Arthur Chamberlain from Wolfboro, New Hampshire. First Lieutenant Donald Jason Egan. Lieutenant Colonel Richard Lee Hatch. Captain Ralph Earl Hines from Massachusetts. Captain Franklin Delano Bynum. Lance Corporal Ferrell Hummingbird. PFC Frederick J. Brinke, PFC William Jack Williams, and the final two will haunt me for the remainder of my life. Corporal Gary Jean Schneider, after being seriously wounded by a booby trap at almost exactly midnight on New Year's Eve in 1966. I carried Corporal Schneider through the jungles for approximately 700 meters in an attempt to get him to a doctor at the battalion aid station. He died in my arms 100 meters short of the battalion's lines. You can understand why New Year's Eve are somewhat of less of a joyous occasion for me. And finally, Sergeant David Harold Brown. Sergeant Brown was my best squad leader in all three of my tours. He was the man I went to. He was born in southwestern Tennessee. Never wore a pair of boots in his life until he joined the Marine Corps. And I used to have to get on him all the time. Brown, put your boots on. He would carry him in his pack, the barefoot Contessa. Sergeant Brown was posthumously awarded his third Purple Heart and the second highest award for valor, the Navy Cross. Sergeant Brown was killed in action in September 1967 after volunteering for a very dangerous mission. He only had two days left to go before he rotated home. That brings me something to something that I'd like to get off my chest. Much has been written and said, you all know of Tom Brokaw, the book that he wrote, The Greatest Generation. I agree, they were the greatest generation. I lost a brother in World War II and another brother lost part of a leg. I believe they were the greatest generation. But I also say this. Never, never, never let yourself believe you are not as great. Let me state a simple fact that General Zaney, the former Commandant of Marine Corps, mentioned to me one day. During World War II, the average time a grunt warrior put in combat was 40 days. In Vietnam, the average grunt in one year was 280 days in the combat environment. So don't hang your head in shame. Even though we were spit at when we came home and laughed at and booed, hold your head high. We're part of the greatest generation. With that off my chest, and I know what is a time constraint, I'd like to begin my, my, my real memorial speech um, I'd like to quote a friend of mine who wrote a book about Vietnam and his words were so eloquent there's no way in God's creation that I could ever match him. He said when the blood of war soaks your clothes and covers your hands and your fellow warriors die in your arms let every breath forevermore become an appeal for a lasting peace. No one hates war as much as a warrior. In Vietnam, we charge the enemy in hand-to-hand -hand combat. 
with bayonets fixed. I still hear those ugly sounds of war. I still see the boots of my fallen Marines sticking out from under their ponchos. I still carry the wounded to the helicopters as they bleed and scream and beg to live even for just one more day. And I still hold those who die in my arms with their questioning eyes, dreading death, as they call for their mothers. Their eyes would go blank, and with my blood-encrusted fingers, I would close their eyelids one last time. <coughs> I should like to paraphrase a few words written almost 500 years ago by William Shakespeare. In my opinion, these words are, are as profound and meaningful and appropriate today as they were the day they were written. The following was uttered during preparations for a great battle that was soon to be engaged in a monumental attempt to save the British Kingdom. It begins, Whoever does not have the stomach for this fight, let him depart now. In fact, give him money to speed his departure. We wish not to die in his company. And whoever lives past the day and returns safely will rouse himself every year on this day, show his neighbors his scars, and tell embellished stories of our great feats of battle. These stories he will teach his son, and from this day until the end of the world, we and our brothers shall be remembered. We few, we happy few, we band of brothers. For whoever shall shed his blood with me this day shall forever be my brother. And those men afraid to go with us will forever believe themselves to be lesser men as they hear the stories of how we, we band of brothers, fought and died here together. I'd like us now for just a second to reflect for a moment on the following words which were spoken by Tom Hanks the character he played was Captain Miller in the movie Saving Private Ryan. I find these words also to be most appropriate for this occasion. Captain Miller said the following, Dying doesn't really bother me. What does bother me is if no one remembers. Therefore, on this day, Especially during this particular occasion, we gather here to remember. Often we hear the words, I don't want to remember. It's too painful. I would much rather forget the violence and the ugliness of those times. I submit to you, however, we must remember. We must remember all of it. We must remember the good times, the fun. We must remember the bad times. And yes, we must even remember the violence and the ugliness of it all. Every time our memory takes us back to our time in hell and we see the images of those who served with us, we see the face of a brother. Each and every time we do this, especially after all these years, we honor them. That's why I read those names. Every time those names are uttered, we honor them. We honor their courage, we honor their sacrifice, and that's what really brings us here today, to do just that. Every time your memory sees a face of one of your warrior brothers, you don't see the face of an aging veteran 
as all of us here today are, or most of us. Rather, you see the face as you knew it to be in days of yore. You see the face of a very young and almost perfect warrior. Think of a buddy. Right now, think of a buddy. What face do you see? Do you see what he looks like now, or do you see what he looked like then? You see a Marine who, in your mind's image, will always look the same and never be out of uniform. You see a warrior who will never lose a battle. Oftentimes you see the face of a buddy you know will never again suffer and never again bleed. You see a brother who, in your mind's image, will never grow old. You see a friend who will, for all eternity, be bulletproof, as we all thought we were back then. And finally, you see a soldier, a warrior, an individual with whom you would trust your life, as he would trust his to you. And you know in your heart that he still is your buddy and has been and will forevermore be your brother. So I say to all of you gathered here today, remember it all. For every time you so much as remember the name of one of your brothers, you honor him. Forever keep in mind what Captain Miller said. Dying doesn't bother me. What does bother me is if nobody remembers. It is our solemn duty as Marines, soldiers, sailors, airmen, and most importantly, as brothers, to remember, for only we who are gathered here today, we few, we happy few, we band of brothers. Only we can keep our brothers alive and cherished by the simple act of remembering them remembering their courage, and remembering their sacrifice. For all of my warrior brothers gathered here this day, as well as those who are too frail to be here, I love you all. You have my most profound respect. I honor you, one and all, and I salute you, each and every one. God bless, God bless America, and Semper Fidelis.